Hey, what's up YouTube? Let's check this out. 2020 PJ low profile 40 foot hot shot. Open deck trailer. Single speed jacks. Didn't really see the need for uh, the dual speed or the hydraulic. I mean, I, I don't I don't drop this enough. Uh, the spring assisted feed are great to me. Opted for another toolbox. Can't have too much storage on these things. There's not enough space in this business anyway. Anything helps. Sealed the deck. Uh, it's rained almost the entire time since I've sealed it and uh, it's holding up pretty good. K axles uh, came with the 10 ply tires, 10 ply radials on it. Uh, I'll probably switch to 14. We'll see how these hold up. This does have the oil bath instead of the grease fittings. Um, pros and cons, they're, they're, they're there for both. Um, oil bath is messy that's the biggest complaint uh grease is messy too if, if you're taking these axles apart it's a mess um you'll definitely find a leak or a, or a problem area with an oil bath way sooner than grease uh that could be good or bad probably mostly bad but anyway uh, like old piglet had pointed out in one of his videos the equalizer bar does not have a grease cert in the bolt, so we'll see how long that holds up. Once again, it, it is a, a low profile. Uh, means the, the fender areas are flush with the deck. Uh, there's there's no fender to work around there. Uh, it does add, I, I think it's two and a half or three inches uh, drop. So as far as height goes, uh, that gives you a little bit more room. Now, I did opt for the uh, pull-out ramps, the eight-foot pull-out ramps. Um, there's a reason I did that. I, I didn't want to dovetail. I don't want monster ramps. Um, I don't haul enough vehicles to really need those. Um, this isn't a single-purpose trailer. Uh, this is, of course, for work, general freight, mostly. Um, when you have a dovetail, or the monster ramps that that area of deck space is pretty much uh you can count it out uh, there's there's a lot of shippers that won't load on it uh, they don't consider it permanent um as far as hauling vehicles and stuff too i mean if you did have a full load you would need space here because when you drive something on here with those ramps of course you have to pull it past it to fold the ramps up pull it back so you're you're always going to be you're not you can't you can't utilize the entire deck uh, this does have the sliding rail system uh, there's two winches in the back section one permanent welded between the axles and seven up front for a total of ten that's uh, one winch per four feet of deck space it does have a full full regular spare uh, same wheel color as the rest too i mean it's it's pretty handy because when you do have to change a flat you don't have to worry about riding on a spare or a replacement wheel or a smaller tire or anything like that as far as a car goes i mean this is this is legit you just take the old one off throw it in its place get it fixed when you can uh, it's no rush though so that's nice um here's another Thing I haven't seen a lot of people talk about uh, the test box up here uh, for your automatic disconnect brake engagement the DOT loves to test these to make sure that it's charged I do have this as far as the PJ ads and everything go it always shows them taking this out to connect uh, wrapping it through the loop um, that's not necessary i mean if if this doesn't seat all the way or you accidentally leave this out and forget about it 
um, it could actually smoke that battery box up there. It's applying full voltage to the brakes to keep them locked when it is disconnected and uh, that's, that's a good way for it to become unusable. Uh, the easiest thing to do is buy a carabiner for it and snap it in. It's a cheap fix. That's not even a dollar. Um, pretty easy. As far as the lock goes, I have a blay lock. A gooseneck lock. Uh, it's probably not the most permanent thing, but it's definitely a deterrent. I don't think any lock is really unbeatable, uh, but it's it, you definitely can't hook and go. Uh, it's a, you know, for a $13,500 trailer, a $55 lock isn't really that bad of an idea. One thing I will mention about this trailer is the grease zerks on the landing gear. Uh, this is the first one I tried to top off and it came completely out. Very thin, uh, barely in there. It's, it's, uh, it's, that's pretty, I'm not, <laughs> Not very impressed with these. I mean, as far as a grease zerk goes, I mean, it, it, it's relatively simple to just have one that the threads in. The threads on this thing are almost gone. I don't know if they don't thread them for the factory, but I'll have to drill that out a little bit and replace it. Not a big deal. One weird thing about this is it's showing the 110 psi for the tires. Uh, the tires are only rated at 80 for max load. I thought that was strange uh, that it's on there, but. Anyway, so that's it guys, 40 foot hot shot, low profile gooseneck, 10k axles, tandem, slide out ramps. Time to put it to work. Uh, one thing I don't like about this is how far inset it is. It's uh, a little bit harder to get to. You're gonna have to squat for sure. Thing inside isn't huge, but it is a little extra. And anything for a hot shot setup, uh, the more space you can get, the better. I don't know how good that gap's gonna work. I haven't driven it through a ton of rain yet. Uh, we'll see how tight that seals. One thing I did do to this chain box is I removed the gas shocks in this box. I don't know why PJ put the gas shocks in there or put shocks in there that were so short. Um, this has plenty of room and even holds itself open. I don't have to hold it up. I don't know why they, I don't know if I don't have a winch plate so I'm not sure exactly if that's one of the reasons. Uh, but I'll show you uh, what it looked like with the shock in it. That's how much space you've got with the shock in. None, basically. You're trying to drop a 20 foot chain in there. Uh, it's not fun. I put all those in there, uh, not fun at all. So that was the first thing I took off.